It's the night of May 5th, 1985. After a night of drinking and smoking, 14-year-old Shelley Bogia is at a nightclub with two older men, Jack Piercy and James Daly. So both of these guys are paying attention to Shelley, but Shelley is only interested in Jack Piercy. James Daly says that he remembers the DJ might have even been playing the Leonard Skinner song, Give Me Three Steps. I asked uh, Shelly if she wanted to dance, she said no. But Daly says that when a slow song came on, Shelly was out on the dance floor with Jack Piercy. Piercy's girlfriend, Gail Bailey, is with them at the bar, getting angrier and angrier by the minute because of all the uh, attention that Jack is paying to this 14-year-old girl. The next thing I knew, they were on the other side of the bar dancing. Well, I had seen this and this did upset me. Then we all went back home, and this was about midnight. Now, remember, the, the medical examiner would later determine that Shelley was murdered sometime between 1.30 and 3.30 a.m. So what's important to keep track of here is who is with Shelley as the night unfolds. It's just after midnight, and the group goes back to the house, and here's who's there. It's Shelley, James Daly, Jack Piercy, Jack Piercy's girlfriend who's pregnant, Gail, and right around this time, Jack Piercy says he's gonna take Shelly home. Gail went into the bathroom and Jack and Shelly were leaving. Now there's another guest at this party and he's an important player. His name is Oza Dwayne Shaw. He's Jack Piercy's buddy from back in Kansas. And when Jack says he's leaving to take Shelly home, Oza Shaw asks him for a ride to the payphone. Asked him to give me a ride and phone. Because I need to call my girlfriend. No one knows this yet, but Shelly has just hours left to live. And she's just gotten into the car with Jack Piercy and Oza Dwayne Shaw. This is critical. Daly says he and Gail stayed back in the house. Daly says, and this is really important, when Jack and Shelly left with Shaw, he went to his bedroom. Daly insists he did not go with them. I went in my bedroom and went to sleep. So sure enough, Jack Piercy and Shelly have now stopped at that payphone so Oza can make his call. Oza Dwayne Shaw, when he's on the payphone to his girlfriend back in Kansas, he says that in the car, Jack and Shelly get impatient and honk the horn at him. That impatient was honking, I told him to leave. Oza Dwayne Shaw is at that payphone talking to his girlfriend, Betty, who confirms that she heard that car horn. In the background, I could hear a horn. And I said, who's that? And he said, Jack and some girl. We have the telephone records to confirm this call was placed. We know it was placed at 1.15 AM. Why is this so important? Because the most reliable witness in this case is the clock. The clock and what the clock suggests about who was with Shelly when she died and who was not with her. Who was Jimmy this time she came back from making a phone call? Living, 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 I'm not sure. Oza Dwayne Shaw is one of the last people to see Shelley Boggio alive. And who does he say she's with? Not James Daly, Jack Piercy. Just Jack. Oza Dwayne Shaw tells detective that it's hours later when Jack Piercy returns to the house alone. Mr. Piercy doesn't return to the house, according to Oza Shaw, until at least 4 a.m. And if Shelley died sometime between 1.30 and 3.30 a.m., then Mr. Daly couldn't have been there. He couldn't have been there, his lawyers say, because he was back at the house. Oza Shaw has been consistent from day one that the only people that went to that payphone were Oza Shaw, Jack Piercy, and Shelley Boggio, and that James Daly stayed back at the house. Period. Jack came back and woke me up, said, I've got a couple of joints, let's go smoke them and grab a six pack of beer out of the fridge. So I got up, he said he needed to talk to me about something. 
Jumping out of bed in the middle of the night to go drink beer and smoke pot with your friend may sound odd to you and me, but Daly says this was the life they were leading. They were up at all hours, they didn't have steady jobs, no responsibilities. So we drove out to Bel Air Causeway and Jack said, the reason I gotta talk to you is uh, Gail wants you to leave. She wants to turn the bedroom into a nursery. And I told him that's no problem. I said, I'm ready to move on anyway. But now here comes the moment that spells the first sign of trouble for James Daly, and it seems incriminating. After that early morning trip he took with Jack Piercy, he arrives back at the house, and his pants are wet. You know, wet jeans, he was wet down to his ankles. Wet pants and a murder where the victim was found drowned in the water. It's damning, unless there is an innocent explanation. We were throwing a frisbee around and it went out in the lagoon. Well, the lagoon's only about two feet deep. So I waited out there and got it. And my pants were wet. I've never denied ever that my pants were wet. I'm smart enough that if I was gonna make up a story, I'd make up a better story than that. But I, I, that's the truth. That's exactly what happened. The next morning, the bridge tender finds Shelly's body mutilated and, and, and she's naked and she's dead. As police swarm the crime scene just five miles away at Jack Piercy's house, it's a busy morning. Everybody there says that Jack has suddenly decided to take a road trip. I think people found it strange though that the very next day you headed down to Miami. Well, with Jack. We got up the next morning, Jack says, I want to go to Miami. You know, I wanted to see Miami. I have never seen Miami. You know, you see it on TV. What was that show with Don Johnson? Vice, Miami, Miami Vice. Miami Vice, yeah. You know, you see all the colors and everything, and I just wanted to see it. Oza Shaw and James Daly share a hotel room. They both check in using their real name, and then Jack Piercy checks in under an alias. But for all his interest in Miami Vice, James Daly doesn't do much sightseeing. Just 24 hours later, he's gone. Jack drove me to the bus station. I bought my ticket, got on a bus. I didn't think anything about it, you know? I was ready to move on. James Daly got his stuff and went out to California. Jack Piercy drove to Kansas by way of Colorado and that's where he was ultimately picked up. Mr. Piercy was arrested first, and he at that time gave statements, made admissions, and for the most part was putting the onus on James Daly as the main actor in this crime. Every time you lie, then baby blue turn two things green. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.